Let's say f is our function here, and we note that f is continuous. So what that means is if we spot an interval over which f is positive and where f is negative, then somewhere in between, we're going to have f crossing over the x-axis and that is where f is equal to zero. So instead of graphing this function, we're gonna find some values, see where some close values are above the x-axis, below the x-axis, and then we'll know that the zero lies in between. We're gonna calculate some of these intermediate values and then see whether this function is greater than or less than zero for theta in this interval between zero and two pi. Let's start with theta equals zero. Sine at zero is zero. Three times theta is zero. Cosine at zero is one, so this is five. And we're gonna take one, we're gonna subtract zero, we're gonna add five, and this is equal to five, which is positive. And we'll do the multiples of pi over six. Sine at pi over six is one half, and three times that is three halves. Three times theta is pi over two. Cosine here is zero and five times that is zero. So now we have one minus three halves, which is negative one half, and then we're adding zero to that. So this is less than zero. So we know that there is a zero in between theta equals zero and theta equals pi over six. So that's one down. Let's keep going with pi over three. Sine at pi over three is root three over two, so we'll multiply that by three. Three theta is pi. Cosine here is negative one, so we multiply that by five. Again, we wanna know if this is positive or negative, so we're gonna take one, we're gonna subtract three root three over two, which is about two and a half, but we're gonna, and we're gonna subtract negative five as well, so this is also gonna be less than zero. Let's try pi over two. Sine there is one, so this is three. Multiply by three. Cosine here is zero and we're gonna take one and we're gonna subtract three and we're gonna add zero, so this is also negative. We'll continue with two pi over three. Sine again is root three over two. Multiplied by three, we get two pi. Cosine is one, so this is five, and this is positive. So we have another zero in this interval. We're at five pi over six. Sine here is one half, so this is three halves. Multiply by three, we get five pi over two. Cosine here is zero. We're gonna take one, subtract three halves, that's negative one half again, and add zero, which is again negative. So we have another zero. At pi, we're halfway done. Sine here is zero, multiply by three. Sine here is negative one, so negative five. One, subtract zero, add negative five, so we're still negative. Seven pi over six, sine is negative a half, so this is negative three halves, multiply by three. Cosine here is zero, so we're going to take one, we're subtracting negative one half, so that makes it positive. When theta is four pi over three, we have a negative sign. Multiply by three, we get four pi. Cosine here is one, so this value is five. We're going to take one, we're going to add this, we're going to add five more, so this is positive. At three pi over two, sine is negative one, so this value is negative three. Multiply by three, cosine here is zero, one, add three, add zero, it's positive. Sine here is negative root three over two, multiply by three, cosine negative one, so this is negative five. So we're gonna take one, we're gonna add this, this is about two and a half, but we're subtracting five, so this is negative, which means we found another zero. At 11 pi over six, sine is negative one half, multiply by three, cosine is zero. We're gonna take one, we're gonna add three halves and add zero. So this is positive. There's our next zero. Finally, two pi. Sine is zero. Three theta is six pi. Cosine is one, so this is five. We're gonna take one, subtract zero, and add five, and it's positive again. Let's count our zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's option D.